Hello family, what is cracking? Lillian Francis here. Today we're gonna be looking at how to multi-sample our hardware synthesizers so that we can take our hardware synths and put them in the computer as software synths and play around with them in there. The idea for this one came from my friend on YouTube, tutorial on how to make multi-sample instruments so I can turn my mono synths into poly synths. And I was like, okay, okay, let's do it. So the first thing I did is I went to the library of Music Landria, which is friggin' incredible place. It is a music lending library in Sacramento. You can go there and check out all sorts of synthesizers and guitars and pedals and lots of different instruments and interfaces and stuff like that. So it's an incredible community resource. If you guys are around Sacramento, definitely check it out. I went there and I looked for a monosynth. They didn't have a monosynth, but I got the next best thing. Oh, oh. This Alessis, 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 Alessis. We're gonna call it an Alessis. You're going to resample this little guy and let's do it. First off, why would you want to resample your hardware synthesizer? So in the case of FA0 slash one, he has a mono synth, which means it only plays one voice at a time or one note. And he wants to play multiple notes at a time. So creating a software synth will allow us to do that. You also might just want to get this hardware into Ableton so you can continue to tweak it in MIDI, put effects on it and just work it into your project and have it saved inside of your computer. I use hardware resampling if say I create a line or a melody on a hardware synth and then later I am performing that song live and I don't want to have an entire hardware synth just to play one line from one song. So I will resample it into a sample and then just be able to play it inside of my computer. Lots more reasons, but those are just a few. So in this video, we're gonna be looking into multi-sampling our instruments, which means that every note that we're going to play is going to trigger its own sample. As opposed to if we just had one sample and we threw it on C3, and then every time we played up and down our piano, it would just be repitching that one sample. The more we pitch up or pitch down a sample, the more aliasing happens, the more stretched it is, the more warped it is, and the less it's true to its original character. You might want the sound of a stretched note, but if you don't, this is where multi-sampling comes in handy. So the first step is setting up our hardware synthesizer. Take your quarter incher and plug it into the back of the synthesizer where it says audio out. I'm not recording it in stereo. If I wanted to record it in stereo, I would have two separate quarter inches and I would plug one into the left and one into the right audio out. Next, plug that quarter incher into the back of your interface. So now we have it set up that your hardware synthesizer is sending audio into your interface and your interface is sending that audio into Ableton. To make sure that Ableton is receiving this audio, let's just go to preferences, command comma, make sure that your input is set to your interface. Create an audio track and we're going to get audio from my channel two because that is where my quarter inch is plugged in, but just be mindful which one you actually plug the cable into. Excellent, so now with my track armed, I can go ahead and just play my instrument. All right, now what we're gonna do is record all of our samples. So in order to do that, I'm gonna turn on the metronome. Now I'm gonna just press the record button in one of the empty clip slots, and then going from the very lowest to the very highest note, I'm just going to play out every single note. If you have your synth set up with MIDI, then you can also just use MIDI notes to trigger the note to be played and then record that in. I don't have the MIDI cables I need to do that, so I'm just gonna record it in manually. You don't actually have to record in every single note. You can just do like every third note or something like that, and and then some of the notes will be stretched, but not more than like a semitone or two. I'm just gonna record all the notes, but I can also show you what to do if you only wanna record one every couple notes. All right, you'll see that there are some blank spots here. These are, <laughs> there are a couple broken notes on my synthesizer, so these notes didn't make any noise. So we'll keep that in mind later. And that will be our example of what to do when you're not recording every single note, but you're recording like every other note or whatever it is you wanna do. All right, so we have recorded in our notes. Next thing we are going to do is quantize them. If I zoom in, I did a pretty good job of playing them on beat, but I actually want them like actually really on the beat. So I'm just gonna hit Command Shift U to bring up my quantization settings and we can look at what we have going on here. Currently have a 100% amount, which is what I want, and to my current grid. If you have it set to current grid, make sure that the current grid is what you want it quantized to. That may seem obvious. I like to use current grid for my quantization because it's really visual for me. I can look at this grid and say, yes, this is the grid I want it to be quantized to. And now I hit 
okay. Now I'm going to change this to complex mode. So you hopefully can't really tell that it is warped at all. And there we are. Cool, they are right where I want them to be. Ugh. Cannot believe I don't have this in pink already. All right, I'm going to just click down on this clip, hit tab, and then drop it in hardware resamples. And then I'm going to make sure to press this back to arrangement track button or the back to arrangement up here. And now it will be in arrangement. What we're gonna do is just split the clip using command E every bar. So right now I have a one bar grid, so I'm just gonna command E, then press my right arrow, command E, right arrow, command E, right arrow, et cetera. All right, now these are all chopped up into their little clippy clips. We're gonna create a new MIDI track, shift command T and drag over a sampler, which you can find under your instruments. Sampler is dope. It is made for this kind of stuff. I can drag in a bunch of different samples and then decide exactly how they are played. So I'm gonna choose my first sample, hold down shift, choose my last sample to select all of them, drag them down, hover over our sampler, and now just drop the samples in our drop sample here. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up our zones tab. Now zones tab tells us which sample is going to be played on every note. So right now, every single sample is selected to be played for every single note. So right now, if I hit C3, every single sample is being triggered. We don't want that. We want every note to trigger its own individual sample. We want it to trigger the sample that we recorded for that note. So here's how we do that. We are going to select all the samples by selecting one, hitting command A to select all of them. And then because I recorded every single sample from my C1, my C4, I'm going to drag the start of my zones to C1 and the end of my zones to C2. Four. All right, now I wanna draw your attention to this little R that every single zone has. This is the root note. So when you drag a sample into sampler, it automatically places it on C3. So every time you hit C3, it's going to play the sample at its authentic sound. But we don't necessarily want this, right? Let's solo this very first key here, which I know is C1, because it's my very first sample. If I solo this and I play C3, I hear the original sample being played, but it's being triggered by C3. So now if I were to play it down at C1, which is the note's actual pitch, I get this note so low, you can't even hear it right now. And that's not what we want to happen. If I hit C0, I want it to be playing my C0 note at C0. So the way we tell Ableton what to do about that is by changing the root note. Now we can just change the root, ta-da, with this little root slider down on my sample, but I think it's easier to do so just in the zone itself. So if I hold down option and then I click, you can see I can just change around the root like this. So I'm going to move the first root note to be C1, the second root note to be C sharp one. And you'll see that as I'm moving around the root note, I get this little blue line. And this blue line is super helpful for making sure that we are lining up every root note correctly. So I just look like to the sample above and make sure that that little blue line is just to the right of the R. So I'm just going to go through and place all my root notes in the correct area. So if you did this correctly, the very last root note will be in the very last position. Yay! So if you have recorded one sample for every note, what you're gonna do is right click and say distribute ranges equally. So now, every note will only trigger one sample. But because there were some notes that I wasn't able to get, right? I have a couple of these notes that are broken on my synthesizer. And so what I'm gonna do is find those notes. So we have one note here, I can tell it's not a real note and I'm going to delete it. The next note that's not a real note, delete it. The next note that's not a real note, delete it. Next note that's not a real note, delete it. Do, do, do. So now because I have some notes that don't have a sample attached to them, what I'm gonna have to do is have those notes borrow the sample of their neighbor and just pitch it like a semitone up or a semitone down. So I'm going to right click and say distribute ranges equally around root key. Now for these notes that didn't actually get a sample attached to them, their neighbor is just going to extend and give them their sample. And then also you'll see that like after C1 ends here, all of my notes down here will just be repurposed C1, which is totes chill. And then up here, if I play anything above my C4 note, it's just going to be a stretched C4 note, which is also totes chill. Cool fam. So now we did it. We multi-sampled our instrument. Now, if I play C2, it is playing my doo -doo -doo C2 sample right here. I can play notes of the chord. So now I have that polyphonic capability. Now something to keep in mind is that any changes we make in the sample tab will only be for the sample that we have selected, but for like the pitch oscillator tab, filter global tab, these are global parameters. So if I change anything, 
it will be for all of the notes. Cool, now we can next level this instrument by grouping it, hitting Command G. We can open up our macros here, hit map, and then map whatever we wanna map. Maybe we wanna map the filter frequency and we want to map the attack. And we want to map the sustain. Maybe I wanna throw like a little delay. Throw it in, throw it in. Map the dry wet knob. I can also just right click and then map to macro four. There we go. All right, lit. The last thing you have to remember is to save it so you don't have to do this again. Just hit the little save icon right here and it will automatically save to your user library and then under your presets, instruments, instrument rack, I'll save it as my Alesis, Alesis, I still don't know how to pronounce that. Alesis synth. Haha. -ha! Hit enter and you are good to go. So fam, that is how you multi-sample a hardware synthesizer. I hope you have learned something and start bringing those old little hardware guys into the software world. If y'all learned something new or smiled watching this video, I would so love it if you would subscribe, hit the notifications and you know, like, comment, help me with my ego and also my algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back next week with another music production tutorial. Bye fam.